Hey everyone, we are joined today by a new guest, Stephen Creedon, for today's Friday Flows. I'm really excited. How are you, Stephen? I'm good, Blake. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, so we're going to run through a very popular story from a Times perspective around Elastic Alerts. Uh, but before we jump into that, Stephen, uh, just tell us a little bit about your role here at Tynes, uh, maybe your background before uh, coming, coming to join us here. Yep, so I'm working with Tynes for about a year and a half at this stage. Uh, prior to this, I worked with a little organization called Solar Winds for about seven or eight years. Um, just to make the, the lame joke, I did not do it. Uh, it wasn't my fault. Um, so yeah, I, I dealt mainly with the MSSP side of the organization um, and obviously delighted to be working with Tynes uh, right now. Awesome. Awesome. Well, great. Um, well, I'm really excited for this one. It's, it's centered around Elastic Alerts and Elastic has been a tremendous partner for us. Um, we love working with them as a company and our customers uh, love their, their SIM solutions, search solutions, and, and go on down the list uh, for them as well. So uh, I won't do too much talking here. You want to see the platform. So I will kick it over to you, Stephen, to, uh, to show us this demo. Uh, but from a business perspective, this is going to really help um, how we traditionally help folks at times. It's going to help cut down on a lot of the false positives um, in your environment and help speed up you know, an analyst work uh, to really surface critical incidents that need human attention and eliminate a lot of the noise. Cool. Um, and yeah, just to, to kind of echo that really, when I'm dealing with prospects and partners on a daily basis, one of the, the recurring things that comes up is the idea of tuning your SIEM solution because the majority of SOC teams are overworked and underappreciated. Um, and generally what that means is that they get flooded with alerts. They don't have enough human beings or analysts to actually deal with those alerts. So what a lot of people will do is tune in their SIEM solution or basically try and turn it down a little bit. So the amount of alerts that they can get in on a day, they can actually deal with realistically. Mm. The downside of that is that you're going to miss some actual alerts that you should be dealing with you're probably going to get a lot, a lot of false positives that you have to go through as well. With Tynes and with Elastic, we actually say, do the opposite of that. Turn your SIEM solution up to 100 and let Tynes and automation take care of the analysis for you. It's not about ignoring anything. It's about taking in all of the alerts and automating the enrichment piece and then disregarding the false positives and serving up the enriched alerts to your analysts in a format that they will be able to make a decision on really quickly. So the workflow, <clears throat> excuse me, that I have at the moment is basically going to do just that. One thing I will say about this workflow, I've already created, <clears throat> excuse me, I've already created the connector between Elastic and our Times environment. I've also created a rule. So in a couple of moments, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire a malicious event that I know will hit that rule against my elastic environment. It's going to populate through my workflow. And the very high level of what this workflow is doing is firstly, we're going to parse the JSON payload that comes across from our elastic environment into times. We're going to change that into a format that we can easily deal with within the Times uh, environment. We're then going to automatically create a case. So again, this is where our first automation comes into play in that we automatically create the case within Elastic and we standardize the layout and the format and the content of that case as well. So whether it's the first case that's being created in the morning or the last case that's being created at night. They're all standardized. They all have exactly the same information from a content perspective. We're then going to start to enrich that alert. And we're using a send to story within times, which basically allows us uh, the idea of reusability of functions and processes and procedures. In this case, it's basically sending the IP address from our alert 
to a number of different threat intel platforms like Abuse IPDB, Virus Total, etc. We're also going to include the idea of a visual representation within our case. So obviously, if we enrich an alert with all of these threat intel platforms, sometimes the information is a little bit dense from a human perspective. So we're also going to include a little map within the ticket of where our IP address is based. We're also going to search within Elastic. So maybe this IP address has been detected before. So we query our logs within Elastic to see if that's the case. We then add the timeline into the case and we update the case with all of that information. So you can see it's not just a one-way communication from Elastic into Times. It's actually a two-way communication throughout the story. Once we have that case created, once it's all enriched with all of that information, what happens next? So in our workflow, we're going to introduce the idea of logic in that if we get back uh, a particular score from virus total or from gray noise, we're then going to take some kind of automatic action. If it's a false positive, what we're going to do is auto close the ticket itself. It's a false positive. There's no point in surfacing that ticket to an overworked analyst. On the flip side of that, if it is a malicious IP address that an analyst does need to take action on, we are going to escalate the case within Elastic. We're going to change the severity. And we're also going to include remediation steps for that analyst. Now, this can be whatever the, the most appropriate action might be. But obviously for an IP address, you're talking about blocking it on a firewall, for example, or isolating the host that access that IP address. We can add links into our case that feed back into our workflow or a separate workflow, again, depending on what we want to achieve. Okay, let's run our case and see what happens. So as I said, I already have my connector. I already have my alert uh, within Elastic. I'm going to run this uh, malicious event. I know that it's going to hit the rule within Elastic. And in a few seconds, we can see the information starting to percolate down through our story. So in this case, we already have a case created within Elastic. In fact, we've linked the alert. We've investigated the IP. We're starting to enrich the ticket. Let us actually go to our Elastic environment and see that particular ticket. So here's our case. We can open up our case. Um, and the first thing we see up here is a link back to our story within Times. As we scroll down, we've just said, look, Times has opened this particular case. We can link to the alert that actually created this particular case as well. So if we want to investigate that, we can link off and we will see kind of information around false positives, links to the MITRE attack framework, just again, to give us a more detailed case around why this is important for me as an analyst. Why should I be worried about this particular alert? As we scroll down, as I said, our little image has been rendered Within uh, the case itself, we can see it's Eastern Europe somewhere. Scroll down a little further, and we can see the enrichment piece in here. Now, we're not including every single metric that we've got back from gray noise and virus total, et cetera. We just want to surface the key metrics that will allow me as a human being to come in here and say, okay, virus total says it's harmless. I'm going to presume that I don't need to worry about this. As we scroll down a little further, again, the next piece within our Times workflow was to check Elastic to see if this IP address had been detected recently. As we can see, it has, um, we can see the alerts associated with it as well. And the really cool piece about this is that we're going to link to that timeline as well within Elastic. So we've got all of this information at our fingertips should we need 
to actually investigate it or get a better view of what's going on with this particular IP address. If I jump back to my case, uh, you may have noticed that this case is already automatically closed. The reason for that, if we scroll down to the bottom, is that the virus total result was below that threshold that we set earlier on. So all our Times workflow does is it adds a note, it closes the case, and if we jump back into our Times environment, we can see it's gone down this leg of our story. Had virus total given us a score, a malicious score of greater than 10, it would have escalated our case, uh, given it a greater priority, but it also then would have added in those links within the case itself. So the analyst who picks it up could click a little link or a button within the case that would feed back into our workflow and either isolate the host or block the IP address, whatever they chose to do. And that is our Tines and Elastic case. Perfect. I love that one. That's one of the more in-depth uh, stories we've covered so far. And I really just like how you can, you know, it's a very human story where you can see each step that an analyst would have to take today. Um, and each each step obviously has, has its own automation there. Um, and you're probably, you know, if you had to guess, Stephen, how much time would this process usually take without automation that you were able to just do in, you know, 20 seconds? Um really it, it depends this particular use case i mean creating the case itself is probably going to take you two or three minutes the enrichment again this depends on you know which sources of threat intel you want to use how deeply you want to get in there if you're a human you might just check virus total and be happy with that with times with automation you can actually crowdsource that threat intel so you're not just reliant on one platform you're reliant on many of them and then you can use that logic within your workflow. So to check maybe five separate uh, threat intel sources might take another five or 10 minutes mm. to look at the location information, again, a couple of minutes. All of that time adds up. And one of the great things about times is the fact that you can actually record the amount of time saved by each one of these actions. And then you can get a high level overview of the amount of time that the story is actually saving you uh, at the very top level. That's cool. Um, I'll also link here a case study with Elastic themselves. Elastic security team uh, today uses Tines. And to your point, I, I, they estimated um, that they were doing the work of, of three full-time employees, but over the course of the year, uh, they think they're going to save 750 days worth of, of manual work, um, which is which is pretty crazy and impressive. So awesome. Thanks for running us through this, Stephen. And uh, another Friday flows in the books. Have a great weekend. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.